Good morning, welcome to Airspeed Adventures. And in today's Airspeed Adventure, we're gonna be working on our new solar array on sailing vessel airspeed. So what we have is a couple of 420 watt LG Neon R Prime solar panels. They're flipped upside down on the dock right now. And they generate 420 watts of power. They're 48 volt panels. And they are going to live right up on top of the arch here. Now there are several challenges involved in outfitting this boat with solar, uh, specifically the arch, although it has tons of real estate at the top of it, is not really the easiest um, apparatus to set the solar up on. There's gonna be a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of drilling and a lot of just trial and error, I'm afraid to say. You can only measure so many times, but like they say with old houses, um, you know, no, no matter no matter what, anything that's plumb level or square is by accident. And the same is true here. When we installed the arch, we paid very, very close attention to measurements and making sure that everything was symmetrical, uh, such as the, the stanchions here and the bases, that they were symmetrical on each side. But for those of you who have been watching for any length of time know that when we in originally installed the arch, we had a real close call. Um, the arch was nearly not going to work on this boat. You can see how the aft stanchion here was threaded between the top push pit rail um, and the bottom push pit rail. It's just uh, it, it literally if, if things were even an inch different, we would not be able to fit the arch on the boat. Now, fortunately and serendipitously, you might say, right below these bases here happens to be a double layer of, uh, of glass and plywood. Instead of being, uh, let's say, that thick, it's like that thick. So that's pretty cool. I'm uh, pretty happy about that. But nevertheless, I digress. Up here at the top of the arch, you can see the, well, the bird poop, which is everywhere. But there's a, a spacer plate here, and we have these davit pipes here that are hanging the dinghy. There's actually two sets. You might ask, why are there two sets? Well, I really don't want to get off on a tangent here, but as long as we're talking about it, this set here was the set that the arch came with, and it's a hollow Schedule 40 pipe. And I noticed that when the dinghy was hanging from it, there was a lot of deflection in the pipe. And it wasn't a lot to the point where I was concerned about it failing, but you know, under, under working load, while the thing is flexing back and forth, you never know, you hit a huge wave. And the last thing we need is, you know, the, the, the dinghy to, to bend that pipe beyond the point of uh, no return. So I called the, manufacturer, Atlantic Towers, very nice people to work with. And they sent me, let's see, this here looks exactly the same, but it is a solid aluminum pipe. Um, solid, solid as you can imagine. And the deflection is considerably left. So anyways, what does that have to do with solar? Well, it doesn't have a lot to do with solar, but my original idea was to take the outboard hollow davit pipes off and reuse the existing holes. Essentially dismount this and utilize these holes here. But the problem is, is these panels are so, so big. They're really very, very large. They're 75 inches by 41 inches that when you bring the panels all the way back, they're gonna hit the split backstay. Big problem. So clearly we need to change the plan. I'm gonna leave those extra set of davit pipes right where they are, just for whatever. I mean, you, you know, you can never have too much hardware, I guess. Um, whoever needs to hang something else, or, uh, I don't know, whatever. Just, I'm, I'm gonna leave them there, why not? And then we're gonna mount these panels inboard here. Flip the camera around. So, we're gonna run them longitudinally, so parallel with the length of the boat. So um, essentially, the long way 
versus transversely across the beam of the boat. And I'll explain to you in a second why we're gonna do that. But what we're gonna do here is drill a new set of holes here, and then a new set of holes right around here. And we're gonna do it twice, one for this panel and one for the other panel. So when we're done, we'll have 840 watts of solar, which I think will be sufficient for our purposes. And if we need more, there will be room for more. So I went to the aluminum supply house yesterday. Shout out to CNR Metals, Jorge over there treated us very nicely. We have one eighth inch thick by one inch wide by two inch tall aluminum rectangular tubing. Now I cut this at 50 inches and I'll tell you why in a second. The plan has indeed changed since I even cut the metal or bought the metal. I also bought four pieces of one inch by one inch by one eighth inch square tubing as well. So the original plan was to take this one by two square tubing, which essentially is the width of the solar panels, a little longer, I had to cut a little longer, and put one here, one here, one here, and one on the, on the outside. And then we were going to run the one inch across the beam of the boat, okay? to essentially build a big frame. But the trouble with that is the arch is 145 inches wide at the top and there's over 150 inches, you know, give, given the little bit of play that you need to uh, build into this thing. And so the panels would hang off the edge by a few inches on each side. Not really a big, big deal considering the arch is mounted about eight inches in from the um, at outermost um, extreme of the boat's beam. So what's the big problem? Well, the big problem is, is at the sugar scoop here, the boat's beam tapers essentially to eh, six or eight feet. And so if we're hanging the solar panels off the edge by five or six inches and we have no boat back here, it creates a real problem with visibility when you're backing the boat down into a narrow slip. And you know, if you're not in your game one day or, 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 or the wind is blowing or the current or your bow thruster fails like you know mine has in the past, it's just, uh, it's too dangerous to have that kind of uh, junk hanging out the, the uh, leading edge of the boat as you're backing in. So that could be a real problem. It will, one simple mistake will rip the solar array to shreds. And because I overbuild everything, as you guys know, I way overbuild it um, to a fault, is a possibility that it would rip the arch um, right, uh, right off or break a weld or something like that. So we're not doing it that way. So the modified plan is pretty simple. We're gonna leave this at 50 inches and we're going to mount it right there. We're gonna mount another one there, another one there, and then another one right there. Those are all 50 inch units. And then we're going to run them, the panels, the long way, longitudinally. That's gonna leave a 12 and a half inch overhang off the edge of the square tube on each side. The panels weigh about 40 pounds, and so the, um, the moment caused by the cantilever arm is not going to be significant enough to stress the arch, which I intend on reinforcing anyways. So this is gonna be a multi, multi part series of videos. And this is the end of the first part here. I wanted to just explain a little bit about what we're doing so that you can follow along and kind of understand the reasoning behind what it is that we're doing here. Stay tuned for the next parts. I'm gonna be filming as much as I can throughout the installation process. But as always guys, if you enjoyed this uh, primer introductory video to installing uh, 840 watts of solar on a Geno 54 DS, we uh, appreciate you liking and thumbs upping the video. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you get notified. And these are free and simple ways for you guys to show some support for the channel and help YouTube uh, recommend us to other people that may be interested in our content. 
So stay tuned and we'll be back soon with another episode with part two out.